It was the spring of 1781, and the American Revolution was raging. Colonists were demanding freedom from the tyranny and oppression of British rule. Many men went off to fight this war, but a woman named Deborah Sampson also believed in this pursuit of liberty and wanted to join the fight. But there was just one problem. Women weren't allowed to enlist in the army. She knew what she had to do, conceal her true identity by dressing as a man. She was well aware the highest punishment for doing so was death, but this did not deter her resolve. While donning men's attire and assuming the identity of her late brother Robert Shirtliff Sampson, she successfully enlisted in the 4th Massachusetts Regiment of the Continental Army. <laughs> Initially, the other soldiers poked fun at her. Well, you're a little lad, aren't you? Why, have you no facial hair? Sir, do you know how to handle your musket? But her ruse proved to be a success, and the other soldiers didn't suspect a thing. Deborah's first mission was to provide General George Washington with vital intelligence by spying on the British in Manhattan. It was here that she experienced her first taste of conflict when her group was attacked by British troops. No pen can describe my feelings experienced in the commencement of an engagement, the sole object of which is to open the sluices of human blood. In September of 1781, her company arrived in Yorktown and engaged in the final battle against the British. Deborah dug trenches as cannonballs soared overhead. She formed up with her company and returned fire before storming the British defenses. British General Cornwallis eventually surrendered, signaling a major victory for the Americans. But seeing her fallen comrades on the battlefield was deeply disturbing. But the revolution was not over and these events only strengthened Deborah's determination to continue the fight for independence. June 1782, Deborah's company was on patrol outside of Tarrytown, New York, when suddenly they were ambushed by a band of British Tories. They engaged in fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat, and during the melee, Deborah received a severe gash on her forehead. The regiment was able to push them back, but she soon discovered she had been shot twice in the thigh. Dread swept across her face. She knew if surgeons operated on her leg, they would surely discover that she was a woman. But her comrades wouldn't hear of it and refused to abandon her. They rode several miles to a hospital where a doctor treated the laceration on her forehead. But before he could treat her gunshot wounds, she fled. Once alone, she removed the musket balls herself, but needed time to recover. She received permission to nurse another injured soldier Richard Snow at the remote farmhouse of Abraham Van Tassel. In exchange for payment from the Americans, Van Tassel offered them food and lodging, but they soon found themselves confined to a hot and stuffy attic where they were treated more like prisoners than patients. When she asked for straw for Snow to sleep on, Van Tassel exclaimed, the floor and fastings are good enough for rebels. And later that night, Deborah could hear the clamor of men carousing beneath the floorboards. She suspected them to be part of the notorious gang of British loyalists known as the Cowboys and Van Tassel himself to be a Tory. She knew that they were not safe at the house and that they had to leave as soon as they recovered. Thankfully, Van Tassel's daughter was sympathetic to the American cause and brought the soldiers food and water whenever she could. But Snow's illness began to worsen and on the 10th night of their stay, he passed away. So with the help of two men, Deborah buried her friend and fled to rejoin her regiment. Deborah informed her superiors that British loyalists were frequent visitors of the farmhouse and sought to expose Van Tassel and avenge the death of her fellow soldier. With the help of Van Tassel's daughter, Deborah devised a plan to return to the farmhouse with her troops and capture the Tories. They waited until midnight while the gang inside indulged in copious amounts of alcohol as Van Tassel's daughter disarmed the cowboys. Now it was time to strike. They fired their muskets into the air in a loud and raucous barrage. The Tories stumbled out of the house. The drunk gang was stunned as they were surrounded by American soldiers who demanded their immediate surrender. Deborah released Van Tassel in exchange for food and horses for the troops. Her mission was a success and she was especially proud that no blood had been shed. Over the next several months, Deborah continued her amazing ruse fighting as a male soldier in the Continental Army. In February of 1783, she was appointed as an aide to General John Patterson, who sent her to Philadelphia to quell an uprising. 
But soon after she arrived, she caught a severe fever, lost consciousness, and was taken to a nearby hospital. This time, however, she couldn't conceal the secret she'd been hiding all along. She was examined by Dr. Benjamin Binney, but it didn't take long for Binney to discover that the soldier lying unconscious was actually a woman. Binney waited until Deborah had recovered before informing General Patterson of his shocking discovery. Patterson, in turn, contacted General Washington. But instead of being hanged for her act of deception, Deborah was granted an honorable discharge. Deborah's time as a soldier had come to an end, but for the rest of her life, people would remember her valiant tour of duty. She gave lectures around the country, dressed in her male uniform, and gained the respect of countless people. Despite the notoriety, she struggled to make ends meet and became the first woman to request a monthly pension from the U.S. government. Paul Revere was made aware of her plight, and in 1804, he wrote a letter to Congress. I have no doubt your humanity will prompt you to do all in your power to get her some relief. I think her case much more deserving than hundreds to whom Congress have been generous. This was the extra push she needed, and she was awarded a $4 monthly pension the following year. Her story of courage and perseverance would go on to inspire countless women across the country who one by one would break down the walls of gender inequality. And so Deborah Sampson's revolutionary act of standing up and fighting for a cause that she believed in would secure her place in history, which is why she is remembered as the American heroine.